Hello and welcome again to another episode of my channel Jesus Doctrine as we continue this series of our new to the Bible series as we're looking at the Gospel of Mark and we're on chapter 5 today. Now hopefully you're all beginning to realise that there's a lot more than what I'm saying that could be said about each of these chapters and it's important that you also take to heart the very things that you read and that stand out to you. It's not just the things I'm highlighting here that are in these chapters. There's a lot more that could be said. And it might be the case that as you're reading, God doesn't show you all that I'm telling you. That's fine. Because you're going to reread this book over and over again through the years of being a Christian. And God's going to speak to you many different things. I want to encourage you to keep reading. A chapter a day is a good pace for a new believer. Read pray, understand. Hopefully these videos are helpful. I have been a little bit guilty of going into too much detail, I believe. And so I'm going to try and make this one a little bit simpler as we look at the book of Mark chapter 5. And so in this chapter, we read about how Jesus crosses the sea and he comes into a new region of land. And immediately when he steps out of the boat and he comes onto that land, right as he comes into the region of the Gadarenes, all of a sudden, a demon-possessed man that's naked, that's been bound with chains, comes running to Jesus. And he's so strong, the demon added such strength to him, that though he's been bound with chains and with fetters, nothing has been able to shackle him and hold him down. He's ripped them apart. And you know what? This man has got super strength because of the demon that's functioning through his life, or the spirit that's in him. And so he's in the, the graveyard hanging around, you know, in the most creepy place known to man. Because, you know, that's what demons do, according to Mark chapter 5. And when we, he saw Jesus from afar, he runs down and he begins to cry out to Jesus, Have you come to torment me or adjourn me before your time? And Jesus then say, begins to speak to this demon-possessed man. And in verse 9, the Bible says this, and Jesus asked him, what is your name? And he replied, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly not to send him out of the country. Now a great herd of pigs was feeding on the hillside. And they begged him, saying, send us into the pigs, let us enter into them. So he gave them permission, and the unclean spirits came out and entered into the pigs. And the herd, numbering about 2,000, and rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the sea. Let's keep reading a little bit more. And when the herdsmen, the herdsmen fled and told it to the city and in the country, and the people came to see what had happened. And they came to see Jesus, and they saw the demon-possessed man who had the legion sitting there, clothed and in his right mind right mind and they were afraid and those who had seen it described what had happened to the demon possessed man and the pigs and they began to beg Jesus to depart from the region now I don't know what's more sad here here we see this picture of this man that's demon possessed now this is sad this man that's been oppressed by the enemy he's out of his right mind he's running around naked and he sees Jesus and he can't help but fall down before him and begin to worship him there's something interesting here that sometimes the most desperate people the people loose that seem least likely to respond to the message that you want to share to the gospel to the good news are the very people that throw themselves down before Jesus and begin to worship it's interesting that despite all of the issues, this man was able to bow himself down and to worship God. Despite all of the demons and the legions of demons that were upon him, he was able to drag himself to worship before Jesus. This man had so many demons that they spoke of themselves as a legion. A legion was um, an army unit for, used by the Romans and a legion would have 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, I forget, but a legion would be a lot of people. It was a large number of people in an army. And so this whole legion of demons is possessing this man when Jesus speaks to him. And the legion eventually, when Jesus goes to cast out the demons, these unclean spirits, makes a decision that, you know what, when we get cast out of this place, out of this vessel, out of this man, let us go into those pigs over there. And as they go into the pigs, 
their pigs run off the side of a cliff and die. Now, it should be interesting to note that in a Jewish territory, pigs are an unclean animal. You should not be farming pigs and you should not be eating pigs by the Jewish food law regulations. So whoever owned these pigs was a crooked Jew and was not living by the laws that they were given in the Old Testament. And so we get to a very interesting dynamic there. Why did they have these pigs and how are they going to respond to knowing that these unclean animals that they should not have had in Israel anyway have killed themselves? They respond by asking Jesus to leave. The people were afraid. They were afraid of having their lifestyle changed by the holiness of the Messiah, by one who has power over evil. But they didn't want their life changed. So they pleaded with Jesus not to set them free as he had done to this man who was now in his right mind, who now had no demons and that now was clothed. But they asked not the demons and the issues and the evil in their life to leave, but they asked Jesus to leave. And this is sometimes how we respond. We see people respond to the message of the gospel. Jesus is either asking me to change my life or I'm asking him to leave. And this is what was played out right here in this passage of scripture. So Jesus is now being begged by this demon possessed man. Let me be a disciple. Let me follow you. But Jesus tells him, go home, tell your friends and tell your family all that's done for you and how the Lord has had mercy upon you. And then Jesus continues on his journey and he comes into another region in the Decapolis. And Jesus across again on a boat and gathered about him and he was beside the sea. And when he came off, one of the rulers of the synagogue named Jarvis came seeing him and he fell at his feet. And we're going to read it from there. And so the Bible says now in verse 23. And implored him earnestly. So this is Jarvis speaking. My daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and alive. And he went with him and a great crowd followed him and thronged him. And this is the point that I'm going to pause. Here's Jarvis, this man. He's got Jesus' attention. His daughter's on the point of death. The crowds are following. But you know what? Jesus is coming with him. Surely Jesus is going to heal his daughter and everything's going to be all right. And at this point, the Gospel of Mark does that thing that it does, where it starts a story and then interrupts that story by placing another story in the middle to keep the tension and the suspense. And now it goes on to the story of the woman that has an issue with blood and that has been having a continuous flow of blood, a continuous period for a number of years. And it picks it up. And now here's this picture of Jesus being thronged about by huge crowds and the woman that has an issue with blood coming to Jesus and grabbing the hem of his garment and being healed. Now, you're probably thinking, if you're anything like me, if Jesus being pushed and thronged and pushed about on all sides by various people that are all pressing around him, surely he shouldn't notice one woman that doesn't even touch Jesus, but only gets as far as to touch the hem of his garment. But yet Jesus says that this woman has faith and he perceives that because of her faith, that virtue or power has come out from Jesus and he's healed the issue of her blood. This is how powerful Jesus is. Even when he's walking by, not intending to do anything, people can get a hold of Jesus by having faith and have their issues of their life completely changed and be made healed and well. Her faith had saved her. And this is a beautiful story about what's going on in Jesus. Jesus knows that someone's touched his garment because he can feel the virtue and the power come from him and touch her. Jesus' words in red, let me just read them to you. And he says, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. And that's the end of that little passage. Now, remember what I said, that this passage is inserted in the middle of a story about Jairus. It's in the middle of that story that the Gospel of Mark is insert, inserted another story. And so there's a bit of suspense that's built as we don't know what's happened to Jairus, the synagogue ruler and his daughter. And in the next verse, we go back to the original story. 
in this Marken sandwich. You got one story, something else in the middle, and then back to the other slice of bread. The re back to that same story. And let's read it again. And while he was yet speaking, there came, there came from the ruler's house some who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what was they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one except Peter, James and John. Peter, James and John, the brother of James. And they came into the house of the ruler of the synagogue. And they saw a commotion and people were we weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had heard, he said to them, why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him, but he put them outside and took the child's father, mother and those that were with him and went into the child to where the child was. And taking her by the hand, he said unto her, Talitha kumai, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was 12 years of age. And immediately they were overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this, and told them to give, the, and told them to give her something to eat. Now, the reason I've taken the time to read this is because we've had that break, and now I want to go into this passage. Here we see this Jewish leader of the synagogue that was willing to accept Jesus, and all of a sudden. He's willing to have Jesus come and heal his daughter and to bring her and to stop her from dying. And then all of a sudden, the news reaches that she's dead. But Jesus overhears this. Jesus interjects and Jesus tells this man not to lose faith, but to only believe. And he's willing to come with him. Jesus is saying, let your faith override the difficult situation that you're with right now. Because right now, you've got my attention and I'm with you. It seems impossible, but hold on to me. Hold on to faith and I will do something. In exactly the same way, the story before, this woman held on to Jesus at the hem of his garment by faith. She had not a hand on Jesus. She had a hand not on his wrist, not on his ankle, not even on Jesus. But by faith, she was able to hold Jesus still and to see the power of God come out. The reason that Mark does this in his gospel is it's relating two things that overlap, two commonalities that by faith you can hold Jesus still and find the power of God to work in your situation. And Jesus is kind of revealing this in these parables. And oftentimes in Mark, we see this overlapping to reveal something profound, to add an extra emphasis to an element that is intertwined in both stories that the author wants us to see. And it is this, that faith holds Jesus still and that God wants us to not be afraid and to trust him. Whether we be struggling with a disease all of our life or whether we be on the, about to die or we've heard bad news about something, trust Jesus with it. They go into his house and Jesus takes only those that would believe. He casts away and he pushes out all the unbelief. He pushes out those that were mourning. There's no time for mourning. This isn't what we've come to do. I have not come to mourn the dead. Jesus had came to raise the dead and he did not want people that would mourn or would dispute what Jesus could do in the room. He wanted it to be a place of faith. And so there were people that were put outside so that he could have a room filled with people that would trust in him. I'm telling you, Jesus is a, he's amazing and he cares about nothing more than helping people in need. And so I'm going to draw this one to a close and I want to ask you the question. Would you read the Bible and enjoy yourself? And would you keep watching and following and rereading, watching and reading and rereading and watching, read, watch, read, reread? and enjoy the Bible and allow it to minister to you. Hopefully this series is helping you. If it is helping you, put a comment there. If I, you think I'm going through something too fast and I need to make remake a video or to slow down or to put less content in a video, let me know in the comments because I'm not sure if I'm going too far with this and making it too advanced. 
as we continue to work our way through the Gospel of Mark. So please do like, comment and subscribe to my channel as always, Jesus Doctrine. And I'll be sure to keep you up to date with all the new content as and when I'm making it. Again, thank you for watching and have a wonderful evening and good night and God bless you.